The ongoing trade war between China and the United States sees no sign of abating. Beijing has announced additional tariff of 25% over 100 American products. The latest tariff will be levied on automobiles, aircraft and chemicals, hitting back at the United States for a proposed list of goods that could be targeted in the coming days. U.S. officials say President Trump has been persuaded not to pull the military out of Syria immediately. Just last week, Trump had declared that the U.S. could be coming out of Syria very soon. On Wednesday, the White House said that U.S. military mission in Syria was coming to a rapid end. No timetable for a full troop withdrawal was announced. The Ranil Vikram Singhe government in Sri Lanka has survived a no-trust motion in parliament. The motion was defeated 122 votes to 76. A joint opposition had moved the motion thinking it could take advantage of the rift in the ruling coalition parties led by Prime Minister Vikram Singhe and President Maitri Pala Sirisena. Amidst global condemnation over poisoning of a former spy, Russia has called for open session of the United Nations Security Council. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that he simply wants the diplomatic fallout over the incident to come to an end. Saudi Arabia's first cinema in more than 35 years will open on April 18th in the capital, Riyadh. U.S.-based firm, um, MC has, uh, a multinational firm has been given the first license to operate cinemas in the kingdom. Rep reports say that 30 to 40 cinemas are expected to be operated in about 15 Saudi cities over the next five years. A multi-car pileup killed one person and injured dozens in central Chile. Local officials say that the incident originated with a crash between a bus and a truck. An ensuing chain reaction involved 21 other vehicles, including three buses and nine trucks. At least 90, 54 people had been injured. An investigation is underway. France's rail services were severely disrupted after a three-month strike was announced against President Emmanuel Macron's labor reforms. Passengers of a Parisian suburban train line were seen entering the train through windows. The strike is expected to affect two days in every five. On Tuesday, YouTube's San Bruno headquarters came under attack. The shootout left one man and two women injured. The man's condition is being described as critical. The attacker later shot herself dead. Police have identified the shooter as Nasim Akhtam and are investigating the motive behind the attack. Austria's new coalition government has proposed a ban on headscarves for girls under the age of 10 in schools. According to the education minister, the child protection law will be, symbolic, uh, will be a symbolic act in protecting Austrian culture from some Islamic influences. Urging dialogue, Austria's official Muslim community has said that people should not pursue populist politics around children's head. Reports say that opposition candidate Julius Mada Bio has won a runoff election to win Sierra Leone. Next president, M. Ada Bio of the Sierra Leone People's Party, won more than 51% votes. He briefly ruled the country as head of a military junta in 1996 and will be replaced, replacing President Ernest Bai Koroma, who could not seek re election due to term limits. U.S. President Donald Trump will soon be signing a proclamation directing agencies to deploy the National Guard at the southwest border. According to the Homeland Security, the troops could be sent to the border as soon as today. This comes days after of criticism by Trump regarding the weak immigration policy and border laws.
Spanish police have arrested Herb Felsciani, a former employee of Swiss branch of HSBC who leaked documents alleging that the bank helped clients evade millions of dollars in taxes. Falciani is accused of unauthorized acquisition of data, financial espionage and violating Swiss bank and Swiss business sec secrecy rules. In a statement, Buckingham Palace has said that the Prince Philip is making satisfactory progress after a successful hip replacement surgery. Philip retired from public life last August, saying that he was no longer able to stand up much. Russian investigators have opened a criminal case into a fire at a shopping mall in Moscow that killed one person. The panel has said that it would look into whether the fire had been caused by negligence. In March, more than 64 people were killed in a fire at a Siberian, Siberian shopping mall. The United Nations humanitarian advisor from Syria has called for access to the eastern Ghouta town of Douma where more than 150,000 civilians were quote unquote on their knees after years of fighting Syrian government forces backed by Russia have recaptured nearly all of eastern Ghouta which is the last major rebel held enclave on the outskirts of Damascus. According to a U.S. Marine spokesperson, on uh, four, all four crew members of a chopper that crashed in Southern California have been killed. The helicopter crashed during a training mission and investigation is underway to ascertain the reason of the crash. Wife of a detained Chinese lawyer has begun a march of 100 kilometers from Beijing to Tianjin City, the motive of the march is to force the authorities to explain the reason behind the arrest. The lawyer who was handling cases of police torture and defended practitioners of banned Falun Gong spiritual movement went missing in 2015 during a crackdown on rights activists. Piton de la Fournaise, which is one of the world's most active volcanoes off the Reunion Island, has erupted, triggering, triggering landslides near the east coast of the French island. According to Francis Volcano Observatory, the volcanic activist has ceased for now, but the eruption could start again. Local authorities have been put on alert to ensure security at the site. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has asked his cabinet to work on a ceasefire agreement with Maoist rebels in order to resume peace negotiations. This comes just four months after he called off talks and vowed to crush the insurgents. Duterte in 2016 had campaigned on a promise to end the near, end nearly 50-year-old Maoist rebellion which has killed more than 40,000 people. A video has emerged appearing to show ten tension between Spain's Queen Letizia and her mother-in-law Queen Sofia. The incident took place during the Easter Mass which shows the Queen Letizia first blocking a photograph of Queen Sofia and her daughters and then removing Queen Sofia's hand from daughters in Fanta Sofia's shoulder. The pair can be seen exchanging words before King Felipe steps in. North Korea's state-run television, KRT, released a video footage of North and South Korean singers performing a joint concert in Pyongyang. The two-and-a-half-hour concert was the closing performance of the South Korean artist's first tour in Pyongyang in more than a decade. Authorities in Thailand seized hundreds of kilograms of crystal meta metamorphic amine in the largest haul of its type in the history of nation. Around 10 million uh, amorphine pills were also seized during the raid. 
The drugs were hidden inside tea bags and packets of fertilizers. The amount of drugs seized had a street value of more than $55 million. It is a crucial day for actor Salman Khan as a court in Jodhpur will be delivering the verdict in the Black Buck poaching case. The case involves the killing of two Black Bucks in 1998 during the shooting of a film. Actors Saif Ali Khan, Sonali Bendre, Tabu and Neelam are also charged with being present with Salman Khan in the gypsy that he allegedly used during the hunt. India's Defence Minister Nirmala Sita Raman has said that India is managing the complexities in its relationship with China even as it seeks to make progress within the framework of a broader developmental partnership. Sita Raman is in Russia on a three-day visit and was addressing the 7th Moscow Conference on International Security. Indian security forces out on a patrol in Kashmir's Anantnag were attacked by a mob with stones, taking advantage of the hilly terrain. The driver of the truck carrying the troops was hit and fell unconscious, leading to the vehicle losing control and eventually hitting the motorbike of another personnel moving ahead of the truck. Two security personnel sustained serious injuries and later succumbed. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj has said that India aims to consolidate its ties with Azerbaijan based on strong, vibrant and mutually beneficial partnership. Swaraj held bilateral meetings with the Azeri leadership to give greater momentum to ties. She will also be taking part in non-aligned movement mid-term ministerial conference to be held today. The central government has told the Supreme Court that its Aadhaar scheme has been approved by experts and was not open to judicial review as it was a policy decision. The government also told a five-judge constitution bench that in a digital era, Aadhaar is the best way to prevent money laundering and deliver subsidies and benefits. Bahrain's oil minister has said that a new discovery just off the coast of the kingdom is estimated to contain at least 80 billion barrels of tight oil. This is the country's biggest ever find. Tight oil is a form of light crude oil in Sahale deep below the Earth's surface. The 50th anniversary of the assassination of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was a commemorated was commemorated across America. Hundreds joined a march in Memphis led by Sanitation Workers Union. Dr. King was shot while he was protesting for equal pay for African American sanitation workers. Former cricketer Sachin Tendulkar slammed Pakistan cricketer Shahid Afridi for his remarks on Kashmir. Tendulkar said that India doesn't need an outsider's advice on any issue. Afridi has also been criticized by Kapil Dev, Virat Kohli, Gautam Gambhir and Suresh Raina for his comments. Now let's take you through some stories from the world of sports. The 2018 Commonwealth Games kicked off with a glittering opening ceremony in the Australian city of Gold Coast on Wednesday. 71 participating countries and territories marched out at the Carrara Stadium in front of a 35,000 crowd. More than 4,500 athletes will compete for a total of 275 gold medals over the coming 11 days. The 2016 Olympic silver medalist PV Sindhu led out a 220-member Indian contingent at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games. India have, represent, uh, India have representation in 15 disciplines at the Games in Gold Coast, where they are hoping to better the tally of 64 medals at Glasgow in 2014, 15 of which were gold. India's first major medal hopeful weightlifter Meera Bai Chanu is in action on day one of the Games today. The reigning world champion competes in the 48 kg category and is widely tipped to be India's first gold medalist at Gold Coast 2018. 
Britain's Prince Charles and his wife Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, continued their visit to Australia by visiting a children's hospital in Brisbane. The royal couple spoke with patients and their families and participated in a cooking demonstration. Charles is in Australia to represent his mother at the opening of the Commonwealth Games in neighboring Gold Coast City later on Wednesday.